What you can buy for under $1,000 in the e-bike market these days is blowing my mind. Yeah, you heard me right. The bike I'm reviewing today retails for $9.99, and right now, you can get it for even cheaper if you hit the link in the description. But don't go there quite yet. First, why don't we have a closer look at this new bike from Engwe, and then I'm gonna take the bike outside for a spin where I'm gonna test all of these. By the end of this video, I want you to be able to know without a doubt if this is the right bike for you or not. Spoiler alert, if you're looking for a light folding bike with real power, a bike that can take you up the steepest hills you can point it at, and a bike that won't leave you a kidney short when you have to sell one on the black market, then stick around. You're gonna like this one. So just before we start looking at all the features and components on this bike, I'm gonna take this 13 amp hour battery and top it up with a two amp charger. That means that if this battery was completely drained, it would take just a little over six hours to fully charge back up. Let's take a look at the bike. Let's start out back. The Angway L20 2.0 rolls on a set of 20 inch diameter, three inch wide fat tires. Fenders are metal and included. And so is the rear rack. This one can hold 25 kilograms max. The derailleur on the L20 is a Shimano Turney seven speed derailleur. And the derailleur is actually protected by this derailleur cage. You also get a seven speed Shimano cassette, a massive chain ring, some generic cranks, and some folding pedals. While we're down here, here's the latch that you use to fold the bike in half. And moving up the seat tube, you get a little suspension seat post, as well as a really, really cushy saddle. Oh, and this thing here allows you to fold the seat up so that you can get the battery inside here when it's all charged up. These two bolts here are to hold the water bottle cage. And these four bolts here on the head tube is to hang the optional front rack, if you need extra storage. Hangway. Up front, you get a suspension fork with about 80 millimeters of travel. Metal fenders and a little headlight. Look at all these super long cables here. This is because when you fold the stem all the way down, they need to be able to reach. Taking a look at the controls here, you get ergonomic grips, a half twist throttle, cable actuated disc brakes, your seven speed Shimano shifter, your center mounted display. We're gonna turn this guy on in just a sec. A little bell. I actually like how this is mounted right onto the brake lever. Nice and neat. You get your remote for all the pedal assist modes and another ergonomic grip. This is how you fold your stem. Hold this up, fold it down, and then the stem comes all the way down nice and flat. Oh, check this out. You can actually adjust the height of the stem as well. You can get another six inches of height here. I'm gonna keep it down low here. I think it's high enough. The brakes on the L20 are unbranded, they're cable actuated, and the rotors are 180 mils front and back. I'm just gonna show you real quick how to get the battery in. You just gotta pull this lever, fold the seat up, and there's a rail right here that you slide the battery right into. Once it's near the bottom, you lock the battery in place, and then you can take the key out. Now one thing to keep in mind is that you do need this key to start the power on the bike. So there's an off position and the on position. Let's turn everything on. Nice colorful display. Up top, you get your battery bars. Down here, you get your speed in miles or kilometers per hour. You get your pedal assist modes. And if you cycle through the trip, odometer, max speed, average speed, and back down to your trip. Okay, here's what the lights look like. This is off and this is on. I think it'll be just bright enough to see where we're going. Let's check out the tail light. Here's the rear tail light with it off, with it on. It also gets brighter when you pull the brakes. Nice. No turn signals on this one, but at least you're gonna get seen from the front and the back. So the battery's all topped up now, everything's ready to go. Why don't we take the L20 out for a spin and really put it to the test? I've got a full battery right now, time for a hill climb. Here's the fire hydrant where I begin all my hill tests. Let's go throttle only. I've got it set in pedal assist number five. I weigh about 190 pounds with the gear I have on. 
And the hill up ahead of me is about a 15% grade, but it's nice and long. This will actually show us if the bike bogs down at all or if it can actually maintain a decent speed uphill. We got up to about 20 miles an hour before the hill really started, and now we're into it. And you know what? It's holding 16 miles an hour uphill. That's pretty good for a little bike like this. Surprising. Guys, that's the difference between a 48 volt and a 52 volt system. 48 volt, if you weigh any more than 200 pounds, forget about climbing hills throttle only. But with this 52 volt system, no problems. The bike didn't bog down at all. Very nice. So guys, as always, during these reviews, I do my best to show you guys tests with the bikes that will show you about the bike and I don't I really have to tell you about the bike. You're gonna see the numbers, you're gonna see the speed, you're gonna see me climb, you're gonna see me brake. Now there are a couple of things that I'm gonna have to touch on as far as what I'm feeling and what the bike feels like overall. And take it from a guy that's ridden over 50 bikes in the last year. I'm not out here to feed you guys a bunch of bull and hype up a bike so that you go and buy it and I get a quick sale. That's not what this is all about. I want this bike to be perfect for you. I'm gonna show you the good and the bad. Um, and honestly, it's hard to find a bad bike out there, especially for $7.99 that this bike is on sale for. This is a lot of bike for a little bit of money. So I'm sure we're gonna find a few things to touch on, but overall so far, it's feeling pretty good. So the L22.0 comes with three inch wide fat tires. These have a pretty knobby tread, which means that they'll be good on gravel, good on loose dirt. I wouldn't take this out on mountain biking trails, but you know what I mean. Let's see how these fat tires grip the road. Let's get up to speed and do a couple turns. This bike has grip for days. And the other thing that I'm noticing is that the wheelbase on this bike is actually quite short. So it makes the bike very responsive and it's easy to just change direction. As opposed to the bikes that have a longer wheelbase, those bikes are gonna be more lethargic. I mean, you're gonna have longer turns, wider turns. This thing seems very twitchy and very easy to get around. If you're having to ride this thing in traffic or around those park gates, through tight turns and switchbacks, this bike does that very, very well. Acceleration test. Here's the pillar where I start and there's a driveway up ahead. If this little guy can get up to 20 miles an hour before the driveway, I will be pleasantly surprised. Let's just say that. But it's got a 52 volt motor, you never know. Three, two, one, go. It's got decent pull off the line. 15, 17, 19. I got there, 20 miles an hour. So the way I understand it with this bike is the throttle will get you up to 20 miles an hour. See, like right now, it just stopped giving me power. If you wanna go faster, you gotta put in the pedal work, which I'm fine with. This bike seems really comfortable to pedal, so Let's go over to Test Drive Island, unlock it, and see how fast this little guy can go. And just like that, we're on the island. Let's get set up for the top speed run. Before we do the top speed run, let me show you something cool about the L20. So many people worry about security with these bikes. They're a fairly big investment, and taking the battery out sometimes isn't very convenient, right? Hauling around a heavy battery in your backpack kinda sucks. But what Angway's done with this bike is that the key has to be in the battery's ignition and turned on for the bike to receive power. So without that, I mean, you can pedal the bike, you can take the bike, but it really won't be fun. You're not gonna be able to get any power out of it. So, nice little added layer of security. So I've got the bike turned on. Let's do a top speed run. I've gotta turn the bike's power on. Go to pedal assist five. And I'm gonna have to pedal for this top speed run because we know that the throttle only goes up to 20 miles an hour. You guys ready? Three, two, one, go. I'm gonna drop some gears. 
Wow, this thing's got some get up and go. 25, 27, 28. That's on the bike's computer though. I'm at 27 on the GPS. I saw it. You guys saw it. Whew. So we barely got there, but at least we got to the advertised top speed of this bike. <laughs> Pedal assist modes. This bike has five of them. Well, maybe six if you count zero. So let's see what the bike's like pedaling without any power. Fatal error with the battery or any of the electronics. This bike's actually really light and it's actually pedalable fairly easily. I've got no power going to the pedals right now and I'm just trucking along. Doesn't feel like I'm pedaling a, a huge 100 pound e-bike because this thing isn't. You know, I think it weighs about 60 pounds, 70 pounds maybe max. You know, it's easy to carry around. It's easy to fold up and store. So no problems pedaling this thing even without power. Well, that's no fun. So let's go up to pedal assist number one. And I'm already going nine miles an hour, so it's actually not giving me any power at all. Let's go to two. Still, no power at all, but I'm already going 10 miles an hour. Oh, there we go. Three gave me some power. So three got me up to about 14 miles an hour. More power yet. Four got me exactly to 20 miles an hour. And you guys know what happens on pedal assist five. We get the bike all the way to top speed, 28 miles an hour. Nice. Here's how we set up the braking test. There's my pillar that I want to stop at and I've got about a 20 foot distance to the first pillar where I'm going to slam on the brakes going top speed on the Angway L20 2.0. I'm a little bit worried because these are cable actuated disc brakes and they're not the strongest. I've been trying to break them in all morning and they don't seem to be grabbing all that much. So let's see how it goes. Let's turn around, get some speed, slam on the brakes. Okay, so 20 miles an hour here. All right, 19, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Oh, yep. Honestly, I held those brakes with all my fingers and could not get the brakes to actually grab. The rear didn't even skid, like it just kept on rolling. I don't know if the pads are contaminated or whether they just don't have the power they, they just feel like springy like like you know they don't actually make contact they're like ugh, like bending onto the disc I don't know I can't really give this one a pass because in my opinion if a bike can go a certain speed it should have brakes on board to manage that if something happens in front of you and you're going 28 miles an hour you need brakes on the bike to handle it within this distance. I mean, 20 feet is still quite a bit of distance and it just kept rolling all the way past it. The brakes did work. They did stop. In my personal opinion, they didn't stop quick enough. So if there's one thing that I would upgrade on this bike, maybe on the 3.0 version, or even if you guys get the bike and want to do some upgrades yourselves, get yourselves a good set of hydraulic disc brakes for this bike. It has the speed, it should have the brakes to match. Just my two cents. Okay, it's now time to take this little guy off-roading. Let's go to the beach. So 
So this bike has three inch tires that are a little bit narrower than I'm used to riding. Usually bikes in this category will have the big four inch tires that have a ton of grip because you can air them down a little bit. But I'm running about 25, 30 PSI in these right now just to get some really, really good rolling speed. And you know what? It's not bad at all. The suspension seat post, I can really feel it working. And the front forks, I mean, it's good. It, like it's not springy, it, it doesn't have any clunking. I'd say it's pretty good quality actually. Yeah, no problem. I mean, this is not an off-road bike by any means, but it does go off-road, right? Let's see if it'll go onto the beach. Throttle only, let's go. <laughs> We're doing it. We may have to put in some pedal power though. We're sinking in quite a bit. Ooh. <laughs> See how much we're sinking in with the smaller tires? If you guys are looking to take your e-bike to the beach, especially loose sand like this, that's what you need those big four inch tires for. They won't sink in as much. They'll actually get you to where you wanna go. But these are sinking in way too much in sand like this. So we're still out here though. Let's take some beauty shots. Let's get ourselves off the beach, shall we? Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh. All right, let's pedal, pedal, pedal. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> I'm sinking in so much more than with the big four inch tires. It's crazy, the difference. Okay, okay, okay. Slippery, slippery. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. <laughs> Man, that was so much harder than with the fat tire bike. That's insane. Time for the fold up challenge. I'm gonna send my little Hover X1 out for a spin around me. And in the time that it comes back, I need to have this little bike fully folded up. Ready? Okay. I'm gonna let it get some distance, and as soon as that little light starts recording, it's go time. Three, two, one, go. Let's get the pedals folded up. Okay, that like that. And that like that. There we go. Time to spare. Look at that. Perfect. Beautiful. Even the little drone folds up. Check these out. There's a link in the description. So let's touch a little bit about ride and bike build quality, shall we? The bike itself, and we have to keep in mind that this bike sells for less than $1,000. Right now, this bike's on sale for $7.99, as is. 800 bucks gets you a bike that will literally take you anywhere you wanna go. 52 volt system. 13 amp hour battery, folding, super light, easy to store, easy to carry, easy to just shove in your trunk. That's a lot of bike for $7.99. Now, whether or not you guys look at the website when it's on sale or not, I can't control that. And I can't control whether or not they have it on sale, but right now it's on sale. For what you get, 800 bucks, I can't complain about anything. Wait, my job is to complain about stuff. I'm gonna complain about two things on this bike. 
The first thing being the brakes. You guys saw how painfully slow it came to a stop. Um, I don't know whether it's just adjustability. I'm, I'm sure I could put some, you know, stronger brake pads in there, maybe some bigger rotors. These are all fairly inexpensive fixes. But to me, if, if I was Angway and I was building a bike like this, you know, these brakes probably still cost 50 to $100 to put on this bike. Why not spend an extra 25, 50 bucks and put hydraulic disc brakes on there, right? Like that would make so much more sense, especially for a bike that can get up to 28 miles an hour. That's super fast. And if you can't stop in time, that could be dangerous. So the other thing that I'm going to touch on, not really a complaint per se, but it's something that you guys should be aware of is the cadence sensor in this bike. It takes a solid two seconds for the power to kick in once you start pedaling. Listen to this. I'm gonna start pedaling now. There's the power. I'm gonna start pedaling now. There's the power. It's incredibly slow to kick in. I don't know whether they did that for a safety factor, right? Like, you don't want the pedals so touchy that as soon as they spin just a little bit, it, it just takes off, right? That could be dangerous if you're just kind of, you know, moving the bike around the garage or something like that and forgot to turn it off. But to me, it just takes a little bit away from the experience. Same with the throttle. The throttle's a little bit slow, right? It takes about half a second to turn on. Ready? And power. Oh yeah, you know what? It's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. Come on, Ben, it's an $800 bike. Everything else is just as you would expect a good quality $800 folding bike to be. I really, really like the build quality below the handlebars, right? There's some clunky stuff up here, cable actuated disc brakes, but everything below the bars is actually pretty good, right? The front fork's decent. There's a little suspension seat post. That's decent. Um, I don't know how that little suspension seat post would do if you're, heavy, if you're any heavier than I am. You know, I just sit on it and I feel like it's pretty much down to the bottom or at least close to the bottom. So if you're any heavier than 200 pounds, I, I don't know if it would even work properly for you. You just might compress it as you sit on it. So I don't know. Do you get fenders, you get a rack, you get a folding e-bike, you get three inch tires, you get a bike that's light enough to just easily maneuver around and put into your trunk or storage. It's not much to complain there, right? For the electronics, I mean, the screen's nice and bright. I can see it in the direct sun. I don't know if you guys can, but the sun's directly behind me and it's shining right into the screen and I can easily see that I still have four battery bars left. I can see my speed, I can see the trip, I can see the pedal assist mode that I'm in. I can see everything on the screen. It's nice and contrasty. So that's really good. And the other nice surprise with this bike is that most of the folding bikes that I've reviewed have been a little bit clunky. They're a little bit extra loud. There's more rattles, there's things, there's, there's more hardware, right? There's more pivots on it because it folds. The, the stem isn't as strong. It just feels flimsy, right? But the L20 feels solid. Wait, I take that back. The one thing that doesn't feel solid, and I've noticed it when I did my pedal test, is these pedals. Now they're plastic pedals, but they do flex, right? Like I can feel the pedals flex when I'm pushing on. Like, look, I can flex it with my hand, right? Again, one of those things, they gotta hit a certain price point and these plastic pedals, they do the trick. They're pedals, they fold, right? You can get heavier duty metal folding pedals if that's what you wanna get. Amazon's got them, I'll put a link in the description. But you know what I mean? It's just generic parts, right? Just subtle little things. They work to get you going and if it bugs you, you can do upgrades later on, right? As far as ergonomics go, I think this bike would fit a lot of different shapes. You guys saw how 
high that seat went and how high the handlebars went, right? So I'm sure that 98% of people that swing a leg over this thing or <laughs> swing a leg through this thing will actually find a very comfortable sitting position. No problems there. It's nice and upright for me. I'm, I've got it at the lowest position right now. It's nice and upright for me. I actually really like sitting on this bike and I think I like sitting on this bike for hours. Uh, and the seat, let's take a look at the seat. This seat is as cushy as it gets. <laughs> I mean, I can squeeze a solid two inches of foam out of there, right? And it's got some suspension down here. Cool thing is too with this seat is if you need to take the battery out, there's a quick lever here, right? Just a little hook action and then you can take the battery out. You do need to unlock it though, right? And the battery slides right out. There you go. So other than the pedals, I think for ergonomics and contact points, that's probably the only thing I'd swap out if this was my bike. And again, for $7.99, this is a good bike. So million dollar question, who's the Angway L20 2.0 for? In my personal opinion, it's gonna be for someone that obviously needs a folding bike, right? If you're short on space to store it, if you'd like to put it in the trunk of your car, backseat of your car, right? This is a great bike to do it. It's light, it's got smaller tires, it's got a smaller battery, and um, you know, it's a good, comfortable bike. If you want a bike to just lounge around, it's comfortable, it puts you in a good sitting position to just cruise. It's a great little bike. It's solid. Now there's a couple of things that I would get right off the bat if I was to order this L20 from Engway's website. One is that big carrying bag for the back rack, right? They make one that's perfectly folded and it unfolds to have pannier bags, right? I would probably get that one. And right now they have their second batteries on sale for only 300 bucks. So I would tack on an extra battery simply for the fact that going on nice comfortable rides all morning or all afternoon is great but if 13 amp hours only gets you so far the second battery would get you all the way back i'd get the second battery and just store it into the bag as soon as your first one expires well you just swap them out easy and i'd budget about 100 bucks for some uh, better brakes the second thing to keep in mind if you're looking at this bike is you should probably be a tall person and a light person. So if that fits your body style, this bike is for you. If you're short, if you're anywhere shorter than 5'5", five, five, let's say, right? This bike is actually really tall and I have it set in the lowest position and sitting on the seat, like I'm on my tippy toes right now. I can barely touch the ground. So if you're any shorter than me, I'm 5'9", if you're, man, like, I don't know, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, you're gonna have a hard time touching the ground, which could be dangerous. And if you're over 200 pounds, this suspension seat post is just gonna collapse under you as soon as you sit on it. Like for me, I'm 190 right now with the gear I'm wearing, and I can sit on it, it sinks down about an inch, inch and a half, and I think there's only two inches of travel on that thing, so you don't have much suspension if you catch a big bump, right? So it's probably not meant for a heavier person. So keep that in mind if you're looking at this bike. If you fit all of that, you fit the body style, this is the bike for you, do yourself a favor and me a favor, use the link in the description. It takes you right to their website, it'll guarantee you the best price on it. And if Angway is nice enough to give me a discount code, I'll include it right underneath that link. So don't forget to use it. It'll save you some cash. And if the Angway L20 is not the bike for you, that's okay. Maybe the bike in this video will be more of what you're looking for. I'll see you guys there.